Hey everyone, welcome to Zack Attack Reviews. Thank you for joining me for my review of episode 7 of The Last of Us on HBO. This episode is titled Left Behind. This episode is, is adapting the DLC from the original game. Is the, the DLC is one of the most highly regarded and considered one of the best DLCs ever because how much it added to the lore of the game, added so much to the backstory of Ellie and introducing her kind of love interest best friend Riley and everything that happened to it and how heartbreaking it was. Did this episode live up to all that? Well, that's what I'm going to get into when I break down the good and the bad of episode 7 of The Last of Us. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of my reviews, reactions, and much more. Let's start off with the good. Storm Reed as Riley was great casting because in the DLC and in the game, Riley always seemed a little bit more mature than Ellie, even though they're around the same age, and Reed being older than Bella Ramsey she's felt more mature than her in looks height she was so much taller than her it was so funny um attitude and the way they see the world and what they want from the world and how she she was making her own decisions felt like she wasn't um as like just following the lead as much as ellie was doing with fedra bella ramsey and stormy has really great chemistry it was really key for this because the chemistry between the two characters in the game was really really tight and you fall in love with them and really want them to be together and that's why it's so heartbreaking because we obviously you know how this is going to end based on how the show is and i really like these two together i think that they did a great job of capturing the friendship the love that these two characters had which made this episode feel like a romantic comedy set in a zombie apocalypse something like warm bodies which i think was really underrated and i like it had that kind of not that comedic feel it was a little it was more serious obviously this is hbo but it kind of had like a lot of fun and funny moments throughout the episode and you can see the romantic things building up as the characters interact with each other as riley comes into ellie's room and tells her that she joined the fireflies and they start going back and forth and she's telling her she's gonna bring her on the best night of her life they start talking about their ideologies and really toyed the line with that which i thought was really great what they did with building out the, how much they cared about each other building on that romantic relationship little bit by little bit you could tell by the little things that they were saying here and there that that's what they were going towards to while also talking about the things that was separating them you know ellie believing in the federal cause and everything that they were telling them about the fireflies and riley you know seeing it from a different point of view and seeing that the fireflies are not these evil terrorists that fedra are making them out to be and the best parts and the fun most fun parts of this episode was just seeing them enjoy the nice things that we take for granted ellie's reaction to escalator and the merry-go-round and especially the arcade which was lit really well i think the lighting on that set in that part was fantastic really brought me some nostalgia because it reminded me of how i was that age and how everything felt special and nice back then before you become older and jaded or you don't appreciate certain things like that and certain advancements that we have so it was really cool ellie's character throughout the show has done that multiple times whether it's the, the porn magazine or uh, when she saw the bell and just things that she doesn't get to interact with because she was locked up in a qz i really enjoyed that and how you could tell even though riley has interacted with these things it she just brought great joy of seeing ellie go through it and love it because she planned this out it's like one of those movies where you see a guy plan out something for his girlfriend really is happy that she's loving each moment and he's planned it out perfectly and in those movies something always goes wrong so with them you know finally confessing their feelings getting that kiss which was really great and that everything that they were talking about how it felt like they were like let's just throw everything away and become a bonnie and clyde thing it was really heartbreaking to now see this stalker that they teased throughout the episode and you're always wondering what's where is it at at a certain point like halfway through the episode they showed you that it was starting to wake up so at any moment you're like well, this thing is gonna pop up when is it gonna happen it was heartbreaking to see that it attacked them we now know some more of the origins of ellie how she got her bite the origin of that and where it all started but we also know where the heartbreak is coming in and kind of why she's the way she is because she's losing a loved one to this we know riley doesn't survive this because she doesn't talk about her and it's really really sad to see and even though i knew this was coming it still felt 
heartbreaking still because the chemistry between these versions of the characters was so good. I just wanted to see them succeed. And that final sequence with them together, I think Reed and Ramsey were fantastic as these characters. Them dealing with the six stages of grief. Ellie's denial of the situation and trying to figure out like, okay, this can't just be it. There's got to be something going on that we can do. And then it turning into anger, anger and her like kind of like smashing things and obviously Riley was past that and she got into the depression and starting really to dwell into the fact that she got bit and she knows what's going to happen. And then them coming together, uh, talking about the situation and dealing with the acceptance and, and, and accepting that this is what's going to happen. And this is what's going to, you know, this is their future and there's nothing going past. It. There's nothing that they can do about it. And finally get into that last step of finding meaning in it because it's going to happen, they, like she, Riley said, it's going to happen to everyone. Everyone's life is going to end this way eventually, some faster than others, but at least they are going to be able to do it together and finding me, me, meaning in this moment, which was really great. And I think it was so subtle that they did this, but I, I felt it right away. And I thought that was really great writing. And for that to that moment to end and kind of leave it ambiguous if you're a video you know if you're a video game lover you know already know what happened but for them to leave it open for the casual viewers that don't know about the video game i think that was really great and then to flip it and show why ellie's not giving up on joel because she already lost a loved one somewhere and she knows what that loss feels like and she doesn't want to lose him now let's get into the bad so this is the first episode in this series where i felt like the episode didn't match the quality of the game that it was adapting or maybe like the intensity or the feel of it it was just really weird because i thought that the direction was really good well and i enjoyed the episode a lot but i felt like this was one of the weaker episodes of the series so far even though it was adapting one of my favorite parts of the game i i, I don't know what it was it wasn't on storm reed and bella ramsey they did a great job and i think that the story was told really well there was just something missing for me and i'm not sure exactly what but let me know in the comments below if you guys feel the same, if you know what it is that's missing. I, I really racked my brain while I was trying to formulate my review and my opinion of this. But there just was something where I felt like it was missing from the other episodes here where maybe they didn't expand on it like they did or cr create a new moment in there to make it feel a little bit more special like they did with Bill and Frank and they did with the first episode and other moments with Tess like where they add something to it where uh, it makes it feel different and elevated for television not like better than the game because i don't think the show is better than the game but it's a better version too for television consumption and this was a really good episode but there was something missing in this episode that made me go like this is really good but it's not great now let's get into my verdict so i really enjoyed this episode a lot i thought that the dynamic between riley and ellie was so cute so adorable and a really neat break between the drama that happened at the end of the last episode and to really flesh out and show what happened to ellie her backstory and why she the way she is and why she's so protective of joel i think that the stalker and them showing it you know in the middle of all the fun that was happening was much needed attention at her and i thought that the episode overall was executed really well there was just something missing in there the special sauce that the show has had so far to elevate it to something great but i overall i still think it was really good and i'm gonna give this episode a c plus let me know did you like it did you hate it what would you rate episode seven of the last of us on hbo titled left behind let me know in the comments below your favorite moments of the episode how do you feel overall and how did you feel about that moment of riley telling ellie she would like to see how she looked in victoria uh, secret lingerie. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. And Riley kind of, I mean, sorry, Ellie kind of looking at it and trying to see how it would fit on her. I thought all that was gold. Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you like my review. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can notify my reviews, reactions, ranking lists, live discussions, and much, much more. And you can watch more of my content right now.